Champions, and today I have my three-year-old Chihuahua, Snowflake. Um, she's had a few injuries from this, but um, we take care of them very well. Sorry. I'm like trying to film this by hand because the camera's broken, so I'm like doing this with my phone. So I'm like literally gonna have to walk over and turn it off, so sorry about that. Um, but anyways, this is new, and I'm here to teach you guys how to jump with your dogs. Okay, without hurting them or scaring them. So, let's get started. Now, for any dog, it's important to start them off small, um, especially for a small dog, but this is for any dog. And, well, my jumps haven't came yet, but I'm just using some brooms for now. Brooms or mops will work. Just make sure that you have them used to it. So I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna start off with a simple ground rail. It's not very high. The ground rail should not be any higher than an inch off the ground. So I'm gonna come high. I'm gonna give her a good five or six feet to get going. So good girl. Easy. Hey, hey. Good girl. And you need to teach them to halt. now I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this just a little bit okay so I have my my small ground rail there and then I'm gonna take some slightly longer ones and a, a small dog stride can range anywhere from about the length of their leg at the trot because most dogs won't canter jumps but um yeah so we're just gonna put that about here. This is gonna be a complex bounce, which means there, a normal bounce would just be like this, but this is a complex. So it's gonna have pretty much three parts. Now for her, she has actually a pretty, pretty big stride. So I'm gonna say one, So for her, a bounce would probably just be like some walking rails for me, like that. So now for a complex bounce, you already saw what it looks like. She sometimes, so most dogs won't jump over the, the middle rail, some will. It really depends. She does it either way. But I mean, she has good form sometimes, most of the time, except for when she has a torn pad. she comes to it like that. You want her to be looking up forward at the jump. You don't want her to be going like, you want her to be going, I think I can do it. Now, if you also look at the jump, that will also cause her not to jump. Now, she has been trained to where I can look at whatever and she'll still jump anything. Okay? Now, she can jump a good two feet. Um, my, that's my other dog, I don't have him out today, he's at a show. Um, Bruce, he, he, can, he could jump, well he's older now, but once they get about 10 years old, they really don't need to be jumping anymore. But, um, he was jumping three and four feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a bounce now. <laughs> Dog 
dogs understand English, so you really hope you really want them to really, you really want to talk to them as if you'd be talking to a person. Because they actually do understand. See, she understands go and jump. Okay, so Snowflake, I want you to forward, bring your head up over jump. And if you really want to get a feel of how your dog jumps over bounces, just hold a nice tight rein and you can feel the way that they move and how they do it. So, yeah, that's that. So now we're going to take away the ground rail. And I'm going to show you what a bounce looks like. And they can be a little bit more challenging for dogs. Now, there are two types of bounces. There are regular bounces, which is just about a step of my foot in between. Then there's <clears throat> collected bounces, which are not very big. They'd probably be like a tiptoe in between. And then there's linked bounces, which would probably be about two steps for me in between, but you have to have a really very um, well-trained dog to do extended bounces. So, yeah, yeah, but I mean, she's not that, she's not trained well enough for that yet. She's actually just started training. She can only jump about two foot. Okay, and now I'm just gonna show you from the side what that looks like, and then I'll show you what it looks like from the front and behind. Now she might put um, a stride in between it, like she just did here or two. Um, that's only because she's smaller, so that means we might have to make her bounce just a teeny bit smaller. I think I'm going to move the black rail closer. So again, it should just be one stride in between for you. Okay? And she shouldn't make a stride when she jumps it. Just like that. Good girl. jump and actually realize how high it is because it's actually not very high for her. <laughs> I mean she knows if she stops the jump she knows that I'm gonna make her go right now. Some dogs they won't let you make them so you just have to do a circle and then tell them sometimes you might give them a little bit tap on the butt. Like not hard but just like a little tap and tell them hey you need to go. Okay I do recommend giving them a small tap on the butt if they do refuse to jump more than twice, okay? Um, but just tell them that they refuse. Just make a circle, put them in front of the jump, give them about one or two smacks in the butt. Like, not hard, but like, just as if you'd clap your hands for a baby um, and tell them, hey, you need to go over this or else I'm gonna raise it and I'm gonna force you to go over something higher than this, okay? So they need to, learn that they are that they need to do what they are told to do. So I'm gonna show you this from a forward angle. Sorry I'm losing my voice a little bit today. I'm so sorry about letting that. Okay, so Snowflake is now gonna demonstrate oh hope oh, what a jump should look like. Now you do not need treats on these because um, treats will encourage the dog to think, oh, if I jump over something, you have to give me something to eat. Okay, now you need to give them something to eat after they do something, after they do an entire lesson. Okay, just give them one small treat. And you should train them probably two or three times a day for a small dog. But for a big dog, I would say probably three or four times. Maybe even five. Okay, sorry, she saw something. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna demonstrate what that looks like. Now you might. 
might notice that her back legs are uneven. That's because of an injury that she had a really long time ago. Um, back when we rescued her. Stand. Doing this can help keep your dog's body straight. All you have to do is hold the leash like normal. I like to not put a collar on her during this because the bell will conk her in the head. Uh, we've noticed that. So just take this in and put it under her stomach. Under her back, underneath her stomach like that. Shorten it a little bit and then just hold her like that and that'll give her some good posture and I do recommend doing this even if your dog is not not jumping because see come over here for a second sorry just scoot it back to about here underneath her legs pull this part back very short and hold this here look forward for me baby girl and that'll give her good posture a lot of dogs will just keep their tail like this when they're jumping some will do this some will even do that keep it between their legs but I mean she's a good girl um, she's learned good posture even see even when she's not doing anything I mean you don't want your dog to be huh, 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 where they can't see the jumps you want them to be normal okay and on jumps sometimes owners take the leash through all four of their legs hey right? she doesn't like this and then she hold, then they hold it like this. Um, now that isn't good for your dogs because watch how horribly you can control your dog. You can't control your dog well. Come here, come here, and then your dog will end up tripping and then hurting itself. See, that's that's hope. Oh, and dogs understand. Dogs know the words stand and hope. I mean, she's a good girl. She listens to everything. So I'm gonna move on to something a little bit higher. Higher level. Okay, so now I'm gonna teach you how to make the dog jump across the She had a ball with it. She still does. Okay, so, anyways, cross rails are good because they're teaching your dog to jump the center, not the side or the other side or like this. They're teaching her, you're, you're teaching their dog how to jump in the middle of the jump and stay center and looking forward. Okay? Because usually dogs don't want to jump very high unless it's a most dogs won't jump the sides because they're higher here. I don't recommend doing this because that'll just teach your dog to go over to the side. I do recommend teaching this because it'll teach your dog, hey, I need to jump. Okay, fine. But I mean, if you're going to be doing agility and not just jumping for fitness, um, I do recommend setting them up a little bit longer and making cavaletti jumps for her or him. And I'll teach them to make sharp turns after jumps, which is something that they'll need to learn how to do if they're going to be doing agility. Turn. I mean, she loves to jump high, so she's really not going to jump to the center. But I mean, oh, good girl. Cool. Come. Now, I mean, <clears throat> sorry. Sometimes, if your dog likes to kind of move over a little bit, you're going to want to put a rail here a little bit more. We're just going to pretend that that's a vertical. And it's going to teach her, hey, I need to jump this way. Come on. Well, she likes officers. She'll jump all three of those. Come on. Let's see how it teaches her, hey, okay, i got to jump here. She's a good girl. She has good form. I'm not going to show you the size of this because you're really not going to be able to see that. So, stand. Okay. And now, I wasn't even going to show you that. 
Now I'm going to teach you how to jump a vertical in an oxen with your dog. Now for verticals, your dog is just going to need one rail, okay, unless they have a distance problem, what she does, then you're going to need to put a shorter rail right literally underneath the jump, like on the ground, okay? So I'll create it so that I'm telling her, hey, there's a rail there, and you jump over that too, okay? So I'm going to show you with it and without it. Oh, she did that. Sorry about that. She, see, wow. Well, I've been working good with her on getting rid of this problem, um, and she's been doing really good about it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, and I'm going to show you how close up she really jumps to things without that. She kind of freezes in midair in one position. She kind of walks up and doesn't like to look where she's going. Come on. Hey, ah, hey, what are you doing? She, she starts jumping a little bit too far because she gets a little anxious to jump because she loves to jump. So she gets a little anxious, but I mean, that's nothing that we can cure with a pool to back up and wait. Um, technique. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get her warmed up to verticals right now because I didn't, I didn't have time to warm her up for a vertical today while I'm making the video. Okay, now dogs cannot, dogs are like horses when they're jumping. They can't jump big to small. Okay, they have to jump small to big or else it's, there's, they're gonna land on a small jump. Um, because they're gonna think it's an oxer. So here we go. Anyways, I'm gonna teach you how to teach your dog to jump right. Okay, if they have a long distance problem, what she's been having today. <laughs> Off video. So just put a smaller jump in front, and still learn to jump it. So I'm gonna show you what happens when the biggest is turned the small. Yeah, it tips over the small. That's something that you don't want your dog to learn how to do, okay? You don't ever want your dog to learn how to jump. How to jump one jump and go one You don't want that at all. So I'm going to show you a small technique to come here. I'm going to use you as a, leap, as a thing. So I've been using just this part of the leash, but that's been like way too loose for her. If you have a dog that pulls too much, just take the loop and the snap of your leash, put the snap through the loop and pull, okay? And then that makes the more you pull, the more they pull on you, the tighter it's gonna go on them. So that makes it telling them, hey, jump, jump, jump. It's gonna tell them, I'm gonna keep annoying you and pulling on your neck until you jump. So, here we go. Oh, sorry about that. I didn't even realize she was that relaxed. Sorry. Come on. See, she loves to jump. She's a good girl. She's just being lazy. Come on. Come on. Oh, good girl. Now, I'm going to teach you how to jump an officer. Now, oxers look like this, okay? They can, snowflake, I don't care. Right. They can range from here size 
to even about there. But today we're just gonna do this because she's actually just learning how to do oxers. And believe it or not, oxers are actually easier to jump for dogs. Okay, because on vertical they have to just go straight up and down. On oxers they can go across. So let's get started on learning how to jump that. Okay, now I've set a small rail here for her. If your dog is refusing at jumps or running out, just put a side rail on the side of the jump, like that. Okay? You can even put them on both sides of the jump, telling them to jump the middle. Now, back to the show. Okay, so we have another little uh, helper here. Okay, we're just going to do a little bit of a zigzag cavalletti now. Okay, and it kind of teaches her to weave one, two. Good. So we're going to do the same thing again. Good. And it's still like three. Okay, I hope you guys learned lots from us, and thank you for being such a good model for us today, Snowflake. I'm going to give you a good pat on the back, and sorry about my hair. Um, my hair is just like not cooperating today, <laughs> but um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more jog for more dog agility videos. Bye. Or, as in dog, woof woof. <laughs>